Feature Friday. The freshest. That is so cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Let's get rolling. What's up, people? Welcome to Feature Friday Plus. What's problem? Today, if we're having problems with this. <laughs> <laughs> and we are joined by Graham Kegel. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome. Nah, welcome in. <laughs> you, were, you were actually someone that I had to. Like Literally. even even if the the podcast wasn't a thing and everything, I would have called you, dude. <laughs> you know, because yeah, man, we've been chatting. Yeah, it's just your head is brilliant. Like that idea that you have of of, of fantastic of a, a singer superstar like in the street, man, is fucking nuts. I Such a good that, idea. Man. How yeah. did that come about? Tell us more about it. Yeah, well, so basically, um, I I see that I saw the trend of like you know like this TV style of shows going on YouTube. So you yeah. can have a cooking show on YouTube. You can have a survival show on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of a show that I could do that appeals to Filipinos, something that I enjoy, something a show that I liked as a kid. So I was trying to think of all different types. I was thinking X Factor, Pop yeah. Idol. But then how could I do that? How can I do that? I can't afford a, a studio and get judges and all yet, this kind of yet, stuff. Graham, yet, Graham, yeah. Yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the, the simple idea was just to go out and find singers. If I need to find singers, just go out and find singers. So um, I went out with a friend, camera guy, yeah. and he's called Gab. And, uh, yeah, we just, so we just decided to ask people to sing, and it worked. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. I, you know, you see these things online and you think, wow, how did you come up with that? It's, <laughs> it's just great. And it's so enjoyable to watch as well. It's so wholesome. You get so much happening in the moment that is so organic. And it, it's fantastic. It really is great. Thanks so much. Yeah, like I, I've seen your, your guys' comments in the, in the videos. We really appreciate it. I was actually with Rissell today. Amazing. We were doing, we were working, yeah, we were working on a few things. And she was she's Ooh. so happy with your guys' reactions. And yeah, she's super happy. No, I'll tell but, you. Yeah, man. She, she speaks <laughs> English, yeah? Yeah, yeah, she speaks yeah, she's good. welcome to come on anytime, man. She'll the be both awesome. Of you yeah? can come for hours. Yeah. To us. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I'll tell her. I'm sure yeah. she's gonna watch this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. She was fucking mind blowing when she I was... first saw. Her. I kid you not. You know, I think somebody sent me. You know, the amount of messages people are like, oh my god, she isn't an undercover agent. <laughs> she has to. Well, she's obviously an undercover singer. Cause bloody hell, it was it was just class. She was un unbelievable. And then when 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 that video posted, the amount of the, the peculiar thing, Rem, was that th th this whole kind of movement that you're, you're making with, with uh, uh, going to the streets and, and, and finding talent to some extent, which, by the way, I think the Philippines is fucking flooded with it. Yes, but um, yeah, man, for sure. It's um, all of a sudden, then we, like I started receiving messages. Oh, my God, I saw Graham's video and I just felt inspired to send you this video of me singing. And I'm like, oh, what? It, it's That's a beautiful awesome. progression. And it, and it all started with your work yeah, and, and your ideas. It's so. fantastic. It, it's really a, 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 and it's something like you probably agree, right? Like it, it, it's, it's an idea that I, I imagine a lot of people have had, right? But none of them have been able to execute it in the manner that you have. So it, it, it's class. Let me ask you this. In, in the Philippines, it's in the X Factor is ginormous. I mean, everywhere yeah. around the world, really, it's ginormous, right? You get yeah. a lot of stars that come out of it. Um, What's like the end goal uh, uh, for you? Is it to become one of those like uh, uh, singing shows or, or, or and, yeah, and hopefully produce uh, uh, stars that way? Exactly. That's exactly what um, I'm trying to do. I'm actually pitching that to different people at the moment, trying to, trying to get that going. But yeah, like you, you've got it. You've hit the nail on the head. You know exactly what we're trying to do. Like it's a movement. It started off as me and the camera guy. Then it, it grew to three people and four people. Then we got, we started to grow and grow and grow. And then the natural transition is to go on television. Mm -hmm. And we have like a full on concept where um, we find singers, then they come to Manila. Like what we really want to do is go around the provinces of, of the Philippines. At the moment, we've only been able to go to Manila because of the, the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. But things are opening up now. So we're going to be going to the Philippines, uh, going to the different provinces this year, um, finding singers in each location, That's and then wild. bringing bringing people to Manila, investing them, 
give them a makeover, workshops, and eventually crown a street singing superstar. That is so fantastic. Hopefully <laughs> we make it happen. Hopefully oh, we make it happen. Fingers crossed, dude. I'm totally rooting for that idea. And for you and your work, that That's is really crazy. Really it's like, I mean, it has all the all the boxes of entertainment ticked. Who doesn't like a makeover? Who doesn't like to see like a progress and, and be involved in, in the evolution of an artist, the making of an artist? It, it's a fantastic exactly. idea. I wish you so, all the it's best. So real. I appreciate that and your support helps so much as well like when you make the, when you make the reviews and things it really helps so much I really appreciate the support Thank you, brother. but like yeah like the what we're doing is so raw like all the mm -hmm. reactions are completely completely random like they really are like Russell she was on her lunch break um just with her <laughs> friends and she thought that I was giving away biscuits because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Graham and I just bought some Graham crackers uh <laughs> So she, yeah, she really, it genuinely was just, it, and, and that's what I feel like when, I'm sure you guys watched X Factor and stuff back in the day, mm. and when they first started, it was really like an office worker would come on the show, and it would be a raw audition, and that person, mm -hmm. you'd watch the growth of that person, yeah. but as the, as the shows have progressed, each year they've added more stuff, and invite YouTubers, and they have like golden buzzers, glitter, and it's gone a bit, um it's gone hollywood it. it's gone yeah, hollywood. yeah it's exactly yeah yeah which appeals to some people but someone like me i'm a simple guy i want to bring it back to basics and that's why mm -hmm. we're doing it like this where it's really it really is raw really is there is no uh what's it called script uh, yeah there's no script but filter, um, there's no filter there's, exactly it's, yeah. it's authentic yeah yeah it does it does feel like it's a good observation actually it does feel um like the natural progression of the X Factor, especially for, 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 I don't know, my friends and I, and I guess myself, when, when we started watching, you know, like the X Factor or uh, what was the other one? He's like Britain's Got Talent. And it's yeah, like man. at the beginning, it was exactly like you described it. It was very, um, yeah, it was very authentic. You know, it felt like, wow, that, you know, I'm being not only sold a story here, but I'm also being sold the potential product. And a potential mm -hmm. world class singer and a journey. And you're a, you're being sold a ticket to a journey. Yeah, you know, and yeah. that was really refreshing. And then it sort of started turning very very Hollywood because you can turn. And then it kind of turned like, oh, I know who's gonna who's gonna be who because they've invested this amount of marketing into this bloody person. It's impossible yeah. he's gonna be shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then you <laughs> kind of it kind of lost a bit of an unpredictability and authenticity. Yeah, it becomes predictable. Yeah. So and and I guess. You know why it's, it's it happens. I don't know. I, I'm sure you're you're familiar with the t you know television industry and stuff like that. And it, it seems to be something that just happens because so many hands become involved. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I I think there is some real real value in in uh, independent productions, and and if the if the value in itself and the kind of like the the core values of it maintain themselves throughout that television journey, that's when you get these amazing shows. Mm -hmm. Um, that regardless of whether, you know, 10 years down the line, people start, you know, tuning off. Bloody hell, you made a 20-year, 10-year empire. You know what I mean? So <laughs> That's it's... hopefully. It. Well, that's what we're working on. But yeah, I'm glad that you agree and I'm glad that you see that too, man. Yeah, I don't really watch those shows anymore and I don't know why. Because like, even, even sometimes, what is it, 2016? 2015. 2015, someone like KZ came out of the... Oh, no, she's like 2012. 2012, right? So yeah. KZ... Uh, uh, she came out of uh, X Factor Philippines, right? Yeah. And I feel like 2012, 13, maybe even up to 14 was like peak era of like X Factor worldwide. Mm. You know, you, you got all these you know, James Arthur mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from here. Yeah, uh, um, who, who else? Yeah, became... you got a bunch of people. Oli Obviously, Burst. One Direction was in yeah. the top of the world, yeah. right? Little, Little Mix. Little Mix. Mix. So then, and then kind of in the in these upcoming years, one of the questions I think most people have, right? And it's like, what happens to them if they don't win? Because you get yeah. the odd story that they do win. And then mm -hmm. they, they become stars. And then you get the odd story that they don't win, but they also become stars, right? They've used that platform yeah. that they've been able to build. So yeah. I guess a lot of the guys that don't win, a lot of the ones that don't win become more famous, like One Direction, Little Mix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Holly, Holly Myers, they didn't win, did they? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, I think it's... um. It's all a strategy. It's all a marketing strategy, especially because you see a very... Simon obviously saw a very solid product in those three people that we just mentioned. 
right? Mm -hmm. Those three uh, groups and, and soloists, you, you look at it, oh, they're a solid product. But the show is about the audience. So it's like a win-win for the for the for everybody. So you let the guy that people want to win win, <laughs> and then you you take the marketable product and and spread it around, yeah. and uh, you have the One Direction phenomenon, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, and it, it's got a really cool backstory to it as well. Oh, they didn't win, but look what we got. So it's yeah. it's a fantastic way of thinking, you know. It's a it's a marketable way of thinking, I think. It's, <laughs> Definitely. And like yeah. what you said, you, you see the journey of like mm -hmm. the first time that they go on stage and then um, they ha they, Simon brought them all together. And then when they had rehearsals, Zane, he walked out and he couldn't mm -hmm. do it and he was going to quit. And then they persuaded him to come back. Like you see the whole thing of from, um, yeah, from first audition to like being a full product. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's what we want to show, like from street to stage. That's what we're, we're trying to show this year. Find oh. people streets and then invest in them, give them um, like a workshops and stuff like that, and then get them on a stage. How, how would you, um, sorry to interrupt Graham, how, how, what, how would you, um, would it be based like on votes, like people would be able to vote or would it just simply be based on, you know, your, uh, kind of people's perception of their talent and kind of like, wow, you know, like for example, uh, 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 you have had a, a few people on the show where it's so obvious, you know, like bloody mm -hmm. hell, this person. I think there, there was a, there was a a, a a slightly older gentleman. Um, he's singing, but like a parking lot or something. He's singing like in a parking lot, uh, not in a parking lot. He's singing like in front of a street, and he's singing like this really classical um, Filipino song, like a really uh, uh, folkloric Filipino song. He's quite an older gentleman. Uh, he was like the number two of like the top five. On 2020, I think. Oh, Tisai, Tisai, uh -huh. Tisai, right? So Tisai. he he has a really peculiar. He hit home because in uh, in Venezuela where we're from, um, it, that voice it's very typical in the folkloric genre. Yeah. And the, this, the people that are able to sing in this kind of tonality and and can and have this recognition, natural recognition for melodies and and the very melodic peculiar really? way of singing yeah become very yeah. famous in the folkloric uh, 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 scene mm. and uh, when he started singing i was like yeah i mean somebody just literally a few workshops a few tweaks here and then mm. stage and he's ready for a specific audience mm. you know what i mean but how, how yeah. would you base it would it be like uh, people's votes or would it just be like uh, i don't know how good they performed on the day um so what, what we would do is um we'd go around the streets find the singers upload it Yep. And then um, the producers would pick okay. who goes to the next round because not everyone could maybe do it. Some people will have commitments, some people have jobs and things like that. So we would have to pick the 10 best, the 10 best candidates based on singing, if they can do it and if, they're, if they want to do it. Yeah, of course. That yeah. kind of thing. That's um, amazing. It would be picked more by, by in-house rather than public vote. Okay. I think the public vote, for us is interesting like towards the finals and things like that so, yeah that's yeah. cool that's really cool can i just ask what is your background on like uh music or or yeah, dude, because um, your eyes light up like yeah like you've got a natural <laughs> inclination but I, I just wondered it's like if someone was to tell me what does fat passion for music look like look at graham literally <laughs> that's, what it looks like. that's awesome man i appreciate that well uh so what was the initial question? It was like, what was your background in music? Like, oh, background have, in music. Yeah, yeah. I've always been interested in it, but I never, like I had a guitar and things. Mm. I never, never got into singing or never shown anyone anything until recently. Oh, nice. Uh, until, yeah, until I've started, I don't know, doing this show and being more creative. Like this is my creative thing. Like my background really, in, I used to live in England in North Yorkshire. Oh, cool. It, yeah. And background there is uh, tourism. So leading groups around England, Scotland, Wales, and around Yorkshire, and then also construction. So it wasn't anything to do with music or creativity or videos. But I actually moved here to the Philippines to play football. Oh, nice. um, so I was playing semi-pro in England while I was um, doing the tourism stuff. Came to Philippines to play football. And that's when I started to get introduced to social media and things. And then after playing football, I did like different campaigns, like modeling campaigns and 
my agency was trying to get me into hosting. So that's when I started getting the video out and trying to practice talking on camera. But that's when I was like, I don't want to do what everyone does, like regular vlogs. This, I, that's why I was like, needs to be a show. It has to be cool. bigger than a vlog or it's just slightly, slightly different. So then it stands out because I'm not going to stand out vlogging. There's many people better than me at vlogging. Mm. That is that is such a so, cool thing. You just you just kind of froze there for a second, Graham. Sorry. You, uh, oh, sorry. We we lost there the last. But you were saying that the the you wanted you wanted it to be a show because you wanted to stand out from from the vlogging scene. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to add it, I, like there's many people that are good at vlogging and they're better than me at vlogging. So I need to do something unique and do my own thing if I want to stand out in the crowd. It's actually it's actually so crazy how uh, the vlogging scene. Oh, yeah has evolved like in the last uh, like 10 years. years yeah. do, you remember, do you remember when it was just like, just a geezer, yeah, like yeah. a phone, like yeah. just like, yeah, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. And <laughs> yeah. then here's my car. And it's like, he's wearing, yeah. he's, he's not in a, in a Lamborghini, <laughs> in a normal, in a normal sort of a, a, a car. <laughs> are we, are we freezing up on your end, Graham? Or? Uh, I can see, I can see you. Okay. No, yeah. it's not freezing. It's just, it's just sometimes you freeze and sometimes we freeze on our screen. So I don't know who's freezing. Oh, uh, yeah. Now it is. Okay. 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 It's maybe, freezing a bit, actually. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I na- think, now I it think should it be should okay. Be yeah. Fingers think crossed. Good, yeah. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> but the, yeah, it used to be like so different, the whole YouTube blogging scene. Like yeah. five, you know, seven, eight years ago, it was just a yeah. guy with a phone and maybe, uh, you know, not a so expensive camera. And uh, they were kind of just jogging around, walking around. This is my dog. Yeah. You know, say hi to my mom or something. Yeah. It's like, this is what it's I like. like a day in the life. Yeah. Literally. And now it's like, can be roll this. And and... Casey Neistat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, look at my expensive Casey Neistat dog. Got, the, got the drone out. Literally. <laughs> yeah. It's like aerial shots yeah, then in your house giving, in Malibu. Giving away like thousands. <laughs> yeah. So crazy, uh, it, you know. Everything evolves so so fast online. Everything moves so fast. And then and then it's sort quick. of, you saw that we see that that evolution. And obviously, the game changes as well. You know, sponsors that's in the power of it. Viewership increases, and then it's like YouTube is now a direct competitor of TV. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like, what? How does that make any sense? It, it, yeah. It, me on my laptop. That's how we began. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So. And COVID has only accelerated that. Like Absolutely. TV, TV and movies, they've struggled producing and things during COVID, whereas all the YouTubers can make a, they have a studio at home. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that statement. I think last year and, and, and this beginning of this year has been such a huge advantage for online businesses and, and, and online platforms like YouTube and 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 Instagram to, you know, really ramp up and more content creators, more content, regardless of what it is. Yeah. And it, it's been, it's been a crazy year online for sure. Even for music. Yeah. Yeah. For music has been awesome. For music has been awesome. Do you, do you find that yeah, in that? This is the time to create. Ah, uh, totally. Yeah. Apologies if we interrupt, Graham. It's just sometimes you're a bit delayed or I think we're delayed. Yeah. I don't know where the issue is, but hopefully hopefully it sorts itself out by magic <laughs> but there, do you, yeah who do you find in the philippines like here in london we in england and i'm, I'm sure you're aware of it and in, in venezuela it, when we were living in south america it was always a bit like slower like you would be able you will be able to you wouldn't be able to notice the change of the online world and online creation mm-hmm. as fast you mm-hmm. would you would see it like a year later maybe nine months later do you notice the change, like the, the whole TV change and now the online world change over there in the Philippines? So for example, the music world is changing more towards online or is TV still the biggest you feel? Uh, uh, um, yeah. Mainstream platform. I yeah. think in the Philippines, I think most people have access to TV. Okay. Mm. So that's, that's where you get the, that's where you get like the massa. Mm -hmm. um i don't think not everyone it's getting becoming more and more like people having phones and um handheld devices but yeah it's mainly um mainly on tv and the other thing is that facebook's free here okay 
in in, YouTube, uh, in Philippines. So that's that's a, a place where a lot of people watch content. Yes. But I'm sure a lot. Of, I think I'm sure, I'm sure YouTube and stuff is very very big, but um, not everyone here has like a tablet or has like the means to watch it. I see. So that's why that's why Facebook is so ginormous over there. Huge. Right, they grew right. massively, like giving out free. Uh, free internet that's crazy through through <laughs> facebook yeah. that's mad i can see that yeah because here facebook mate i mean you've been here it's not that big like facebook is huge it's ginormous mm -hmm. but like my mom is in there my father's in there <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like it, it's it's changed the demographics changed a bit and now you're getting all you know all the girls and all, all my lads we're just on on instagram and then now we're at, that's why they've sort of have disconnected now they're on tiktok <laughs> Um, yeah, TikTok. You know, they're doing the dancing and stuff. And I'm, you know, you can do all the dance you want. It's not really how I roll, but if you want to dance, that's fine. Uh, be before people start blasting me, because the funny thing is, people sometimes just to just to like uh, troll me, I guess they send me like the worst TikToks they can find online. Oh my gosh, Graham, you do not want to see them. Let's see a sample, man. Nah, no, nah, you don't. See them. Maybe I'll send you some in messages. But you don't want to see them. So it, it's it's so it's so interesting then that in the Philippines Facebook it's can ginormous and mm. we noticed that like people like uh, uh, some of these biggest covers that we have reviewed on the channel have come from Facebook. Yeah. Mm. Some of the biggest covers like the music yeah, covers. Yeah, music covers. Like for example, uh, uh, Bugoy's Bugoy nice, yeah, yeah. covers. They're ginormous on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, Daryl, you know the whole Buddha Kill gang. They they're so big on Facebook. You know, and and it just never clicked, but now it kind of does. Yeah, man. Yeah, it kind of does. It's a platform to go. <laughs> so TikTok, TikTok isn't that big then over there. TikTok's get is big, man. I, I was like, we just started uploading our content on TikTok um, yeah. because before it was only fifteen seconds, right? Yeah. yeah. But now you can do. We can do okay. three minutes. You can three do three minutes. minutes. I think we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once you've reached a certain amount of views. You All can right. Do three um drop us your handles but we we, we started it we it's just my name graham kagel okay there you go. <laughs> nice so you're just freezing no, the, a bit again i think the internet cut again yeah let me let me, let me just try you, you guys yeah let me, let me try and just try to fix it here one sec so what what is like the main drive to to uh so like with your group of people how many people do you have in your crew right now helping you out because it, it's a task yeah so when we go to the streets there's three of us so okay. gab he's mm -hmm. the videographer and he uh he's been there since the first day okay uh he like liked the idea and came with me the first day and then we have mac who works with me full time All um right. and he does the audio and he also does the editing Oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. So you, you got somebody to help uh, to edit. That, that's dope. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, we do it. We do like the editing together. Yeah, that's cool. How long does it take you to edit a one of the videos? Um, well, when I was first, when we first the the first uh, videos, I was just doing it all myself. So okay. I would I would like film. We'd film on the like on a Monday, and then. Uh, I would edit the whole week. It would take me the whole week. Yeah. God, because yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not good at editing. That's <laughs> why. Uh, but now, now we have. I have extra help. <laughs> That's, That's cool. That's dope. I, I totally feel you though. Like when when we first started making videos, my God, a, a, an eight minute video would take me like seven days <laughs> to edit. Really? It was like you oh. have so much content as well. Yeah, but you kind of like because you get used to it by doing it so much rep yeah. repeating the same like process so much so I, I was like at the at the end of like the 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 week i'll be like there must be a way to do this quicker there must be a way <laughs> to like end my excruciating pain <laughs> yeah you so, found a way though yeah that just re productive. repetition repetition that that's the only way <laughs> she's awesome she's awesome man she's being modest she's fucking unbelievable at it Shut but up. But the smashing it. Yeah, she's she's so 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 good at it. But the the it is different type of content. Like yeah, the the type of content you make to edit mm. is heavy editing. It's a bit mm. rough because dude, I can't imagine. <laughs> 
condom. I don't know how many people, like how many people do you like go up to? I mean, you don't probably don't even count anymore. No, well, yeah, well, maybe we ask 20, 20 people and yeah. one person will see. Oh my God. Exactly, and we That's see what, time. and in the episode, brother, how many do we see? Five, six? <laughs> yeah, five. Yeah, so imagine all the editing you got to do, because there's probably, you know, there's probably some moments there that happen that is like, what the fuck happened here? You know what I mean? So, and yeah, imagine- similar, to, similar to you guys, it becomes like a, not a routine, but there's a system and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like we have a, there's a certain way we tell our stories, like, you know, how it is. Yeah. Like yeah. we have the uh, singers at the end and things like that. So, yeah. It, it, you catch, you catch on a rhythm, don't yeah. you? Like it, there's exactly, a natural yeah. flow that you catch on it's it's like an editing rhythm yeah 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 that's what we're trying to do like we we're trying to like have one singer if we have like a singer that sings a rock song mm-hmm. then the next singer we show should be a contrast so it's not two rock songs in a row mm. like yeah we have certain rules and ways that we we tell the story but then since we've done it a lot of times now it's kind of uh, like easy to do easier to do yeah, because it becomes more natural. There, there, there was one thing I did notice that like you get such a variety of uh, of singers in the show. Right now, I know it's made on purpose, but it's like a, a, it is nice because even if someone might not be a fan of a specific genre, then mm-hmm. you get some guy singing fucking Elton John, and then yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. and then you get some guy singing Rihanna, and you're like, what? Yeah, then, you know what I mean. So it's such a such a nice variety. It is. Um, you know what really is interesting is the fact that you were in the tourism industry. You're in the mm. um, in England what was that like yeah yeah that was awesome man like basically when I was like eight pretty cold yeah but we didn't we didn't really yeah we didn't really uh we didn't operate like during December and January right but I I went on um like a road trip across America like New York to LA when I was 18 like visiting the different cities and like in between Mm -hmm. and then when I got home from there I wanted to do the same thing in England so I like uh, set that up with my dad, um, taking people around. Um, but yeah, it's made, it's it's really cool. Like because we got to meet people from all over the world. Like we met Filipinos, people from like Kazakhstan, Americans, Australians. Never met anyone from Venezuela, unfortunately. That's right. That's okay. But, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Uh, but no, it's it's awesome, and you learn so much about. Because I was like tour guiding people, and I was like only eighteen, so. Like it taught me a lot about leadership and social skills and learning about different cultures and it opened my eyes up to different things. Like I believe everything happens for a reason. And if I didn't do the travel business, I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. And like what I'm actually pitching is it's very like our shows about travel, social interactions and music. Mm-hmm. Like the music actually is secondary to the social interactions and the travel. So I'm still kind of in the travel industry. Like <laughs> this is what I, this like it's our opportunity now that things are opening up. It's our opportunity to sell these places again. Like re, the, they've just reopened. Barakai's just reopened. Baguio's open for tourism. So I'm still like kind of in the tourism industry, going there and showing people this is how you travel to these places. And um, I'm just finding singers on the way. That is dope. I, I think it's fantastic. And is is helping the community as much as it's helping the the musical and entertainment uh, uh, community too. It, it's it's a cool it's a cool thing. You know what? I never I I didn't catch on the northerner accent. Until you like said that you were from the north, and I was like, oh, yeah. that's where it is. But you knew it, you knew it was English. Yeah, I couldn't I, I couldn't because it's really neutral. It's really nice and subtle. Uh, but yeah, it was like where I can't. <laughs> nice though nice yeah north yorkshire have you have you guys ever been up there no nah. yes i i, I went oh. uh, yeah i went for um like a little day trip with with some of my friends and it was so cold i was <laughs> it, it was raining and it was like super cold and i was not dressed for the weather and oh, that's the uh, thing. it was just like oh no i just want to go back to south america right now. <laughs> but it was lovely sites though beautiful places and the historical places are just mesmerizing really really wonderful awesome that's we, have a saying. we have a saying in, York, in yorkshire 
uh, there's not there's no such thing as the wrong weather, just the wrong clothes. I totally agree with that. Yeah, that, that is something <laughs> that is something you would say in North Yorkshire, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, bad weather. when you go to places like those, I've never been to North Yorkshire, but I, I, I've traveled a, a lot in England, uh, competing or um, training or hitting partner, becoming a hitting partner by, by other people. And um, one thing you notice is like when you see these structures, and you start traveling and stuff, especially in places like England, I find maybe it. This is very uh, uh, prevalent in in Europe. When when you see structures like, like you know those castles and like these huge old monuments, you're like, it really hits you in this in this perspective of like uh, existential you're, way. Like bloody hell! It's like you're part of history. Yeah, there yeah. was people here like a thousand years ago. <laughs> Makes you, know? you feel small, right? It yeah. does. So it's kind of yeah. the same. you probably agree with this, but it's probably it, it feels the same when you start traveling worldwide mm -hmm. and you start meeting people from all over the place. You're like the little problems that I think I have here are, are and it's not that they're irrelevant, but it's like if you put them into perspective and you start noticing other people's lives and how the way they live lives in, in other parts of the world and, yeah. and how cultures impact perspective and happiness and, and, and outlook. Then you all of a sudden start realizing it's like maybe the issue isn't the issue. Maybe the issue is me and just the way I think I see things. Yeah, man. I like the way you think, man. That's so true. <laughs> but I think so it, true. I think it's only a realization you make when you get out. Me exactly. Yeah, you get yeah. out and you meet people from all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Travel broadens the mind and meeting different people. It it's seems. really like that's what education is like people think education is just school and it stops there but it, mm. it's it's really like everything after after school is education like you know like when you when you're learning to drive like the 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 lessons and things that's not that's not how that's not the best part of it you don't learn how to drive there you learn how to drive like once you've got the experience yeah. like it's the same with this stuff man yeah i agree i, I think it there is sometimes maybe too much of an emphasis in in that beginning part, you know, in the the, the lesson bit where you're kind of like in school and, and then you think that's kind of it, you know, that's the whole world. And then you mm -hmm. realize that there is another world, mm -hmm. actually the real one out there. And and it, it, it is very refreshing. That's why I think, and, and it's cheeky the way you're doing it. It's really nice, man. Like the, <laughs> the whole, the, because the show, and I noticed it, because if you probably, you know, you've seen the videos. I was like, oh, what place is that that they're on? Or what's that mm -hmm. in the background? Or where's this person from? And like, you know, and you met different, uh, 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 like someone was representing their church and singing for their church. <laughs> and then another person, they yeah. were from like, they like uh, they had like, the, what is it? They were like Marines, not really Marines, but they like, they- Oh, the, the, the sailors. The sailors. <laughs> so it's just much more than just Absolutely. a singing show. You it's know? showing Definitely. a culture as well. And, and that is, I feel like that is so important, especially when you have, mixed cultures and you grow up uh with different cultures in, in your environment sometimes uh, you miss on certain things because you know you're you're both and you're none at the same time you know it's like it's like do i really belong here is right. this really what i represent and then you find with growth and and time basically that you could be both and more you know and and i wonder what what that was for you uh, especially here in England. Because you moved to the Philippines and that's quite a peculiar, mm -hmm. uh, from the football you mentioned, but yeah, why the Philippines? Well, my, I'm actually Filipino. So my mum's my mom's Filipino, my dad's British. Right. And so, yeah, it was a bit of a culture shock moving here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was kind of used to it. Like my mum is Filipino so I, and yeah. I'm a mummy's boy kind of thing. So uh, <laughs> he... I'm always used to the like some things that people in England might find a bit weird, but yeah, definitely a culture shock. I know when when I first um, my first training session playing football, it was in March uh, in in Philippines, which is the hottest time of year. Ooh. I'd just been playing in England in March, <laughs> so like that's cold. freezing cold. Yeah, yeah. Then then flew to the Philippines and I was trying to train with like it's like a better level professional now then I'm trying to play with like all these Filipino like national team players in this in the sun in the heat it's so Oof. difficult <laughs> definitely Oof. I was definitely shocked moving here but um kind of adjust and then this is part of me integrating and it's part of like 
you see, like you say, the journey. It's not mm -hmm. just the journeys of the singers. It's like our journey as, the sh as a show, like it started with me and one guy and then it grows and grows. And also my Tagalog wasn't great and now it's getting better and, and I'm meeting more people and learning more of the culture, learning more about the food and everything. So like people are seeing the growth of a lot of, a lot of different You as well, things. yeah. Like, growth of me, growth of the show. Like I'm, I'm not sure if you noticed, like in the first episodes we had like, a microphone that was like a lapel mic yeah. tape, just because it looked the right thing like <laughs> now, we have, now we have like the right equipment like and this is all on purpose to be honest like we just we didn't want to make we didn't want it to be perfect straight away like if it's good enough like just get out and do it like I had so many excuses not to film like I didn't have the right microphone I didn't have a camera mic so yeah if even if it's not perfect it's good enough so do it and then the next time we make it better if it's not perfect but it's good enough we post it and that's how we how we're growing and that's how everything like with my hosting hopefully it's getting better Tagalog is getting better <laughs> no, it's, but, it's, cool. it's, it's definitely enjoyable I, th I think there is there is there is a lot of value because there's a lot of value in that type of mentality man and I mean you, you've obviously figured this out yourself but this idea it's an of active mentality yeah, it's this idea of repetitions yeah. you know it doesn't matter if it's not perfect yet yeah man we'll, they will get a point where uh, that's the other thing right I, <laughs> most people seem to be like uh to uh, it, there's just nothing wrong with it but you know like perfectionists so if yeah. it's not perfect never in the first enough, yeah. fucking episode I'm never gonna do the second one and yeah. it's like yeah that's usually not how it goes, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's usually exactly, clunky man. and weird and there's sellotape involved and there's awkwardness involved. <laughs> exactly. Maybe there's a crap day of singers, you know, who knows? And, yeah, and it, but it's just a matter of, of, of that mentality of, um, of repetition. I think that probably came from your sports background. I think so too. Yeah, man. I'm sure you have a similar thing with the tennis and stuff, but it's definitely that like, you know what it's like, you get injured, you still strap it up and mm -hmm. keep going. And that's why we've survived like COVID really. Like, sh like street singing superstar, like I says about travel and social interactions. They're the two things that got canceled in 2020. <laughs> you can't travel anymore yeah. and you have to socially distance. But if we can overcome that, we can overcome anything. And yeah, I agree. I think it comes from, yeah, football and running and like all the, yeah, from athletes stuff. <laughs> I don't know, oh, it's yeah. just i was gonna ask you was your what was your main motivation throughout last year because it was a, a tough year Did you managed to keep going dude. yeah what the fuck? it was a tough year to uh, keep up with social interactions it was a tough year mentally for a lot of people that were really used to you know being outside and stuff and I, I i was just wondering what was your main motivation that drove the whole of your team to keep going um well i said to I said to Mac, um, I said to him that we need to, because it's actually, quite, we, we got hit pretty badly. Like we, we had things in the pipeline, like ready to go. Like we were going to travel and all this kind of stuff. So, but everything just got stopped. So I said to him, like, as long as we and like leave COVID stronger, mm -hmm. then we enter it. Yeah. I don't care in what way, like in uh, like our bodies, everything, yeah. like health, our health, as long as we leave it, stronger than we enter it and that's what we did like we stretched we ran we did like anything that would make us better and then mm. now like i could nearly do the splits Woo. Like, through covid and stuff like that so we just like as long as we're yeah as long as we're better at the end of it then i'm happy and yeah we just found things to do we found like things to re-edit and uh, the first time the first piece of content we were able to do was with make a wish foundation oh, um, cool. so they grant um wishes to terminally ill kids mm -hmm. and yeah like uh, they approached me to make content and stuff so like we weren't able to go around the streets and do that stuff but we were able to do like a smaller shoot and we're not going around and things so we started with that and then yeah we just adjusted to the norms like just did what we had to do and just yeah. was patient like i always knew this was going to benefit us like because it's not going to last forever. We're not always going to be stopped from traveling and socially interact, socially interact. So I really see it as like, like if we just stayed and just waited, it's going to be our opportunity once it opens up again. And that's, we're about in that stage now where we can go there again and we can 
do it, but with new norms and we can educate people at the same time on how to do it, yeah. like how to travel and how to socially distance. That is fantastic. Yeah. That's a really good, hopeful uh, uh, way of approaching such a difficult time. And uh, I, 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 I admire that a lot. You that like, is fantastic. You learned to do the splits? <laughs> yeah, really? man. Damn. I'm close, I'm close, but uh, yeah. Was it like through yoga, yeah? Or, or just stretching? Uh, yeah, yoga and just stretching every day. Like every morning, uh, Mac, the editor and I, we get up and we do like 45 minutes of yoga and then we do 30 mm -hmm. minutes of splits. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> I I love that lifestyle. So I, I used to be a dancer, so uh oh, nice. but, but I, I don't anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I injured and I got injured and I, I had to stop completely. So I'm I'm slowly stretching back again and I I feel in my element even though I'm like an old 90 year old granny and I can't touch really? my toes anymore. <laughs> but uh it's it's such a It's such a cool like way of unwinding and finding yourself. Mm -hmm. I think it's I I love yoga for for that yeah. whole it's, body it's, mind experience. It's oddly so... difficult. Like yeah, <laughs> it makes you sweat. Yes, yeah, man, definitely. So, especially if you're in the Philippines and it's warm. You know? <laughs> But it's oddly difficult. Like I I think there's so much. Uh, yeah, it's odd how hard it actually is to move. <laughs> to actually move and find stillness at <laughs> yeah. the same time and and weird. yeah and be still and control the breath yeah <laughs> and thinking about everything yeah it's difficult but that once you practice if that's why it's practice right yeah you practice in it that's yeah. cool there, there is i i found um one of the things we did uh uh there was this random lady well she wasn't random she she knew what she was doing she just came out of nowhere and uh, we, when we were in the academy we were training a lot and one of the things that was happening was Uh, uh, injuries were starting to occur because spe especially in tennis you you basically have to compete every week because mm -hmm. you have to lose more than you win just to get good and mm -hmm. um, and that happens even in the pro tour and a lot of injuries were happening and things like that and then this lady who works with footballers I forget I think her name was Sh uh, Shannon Shannon something she's worked with uh, Arsenal football players she works with a, a lot with the Arsenal football club but she does football right. yoga and uh -huh. uh, She, she came over to the academy and then she started working with our stretching. And I kid you not, I've never seen, I mean, including myself, I've never seen a bunch of more stiff <laughs> people in the world. You know, we, and then she's like, and then she brought, just to embarrass her, she was a, she was a funny one. She, she was an amazing lady, but she was so cheeky. She brought this like slightly older woman. Like, and by older, I mean like maybe 70. And then she made her lead the lesson. Dude, how could she do things that I can't like? That you couldn't do. Like I couldn't even <laughs> remotely dream of, you know? So stretching is such a weird one. It's like, it does not matter how good you look. It does not matter how good you feel. If you don't do it, you won't get good at it. And the thing is, it yeah. makes you feel so good after though. Like after mm. you're done, you're like, whoa, the whole world is <laughs> mine. Let's go. Yeah, you can't beat it. that feeling. I know, it's great. <laughs> By the way, can I just ask you, just for curiosity, cool. curiosity yeah. purposes, but like, I, I tend to like ask this question quite often, but like, what's the worst thing that's happened was you were filming? Like one of your, like, <laughs> your mm. horror stories, <laughs> hmm. like bad weather. Horror or stories. We've had, a, we've had a few like uh, days where we had to cut filming because of the weather uh -huh. and security kicking us out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's the main one, just getting kicked out by security because we, we, a lot of the, before COVID, we would just do it guerrilla style and not oh. ask permission. But obviously, this time around, we asked for permission from like the mayors and things. Oh, nice. But I haven't really had any crazy do, things. Do you have to ask for permission from the mayors? Um, well, because the rules were quite vague on whether we were allowed to do it. Oh, right, because you're actually shooting. Checked. Right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like we weren't sure. Like they said that you're allowed to vlog, but then TV's not allowed, and then like certain things, it was just okay. wasn't clear. So just to be safe, like we asked, we just got permission. Yeah. But what was it like to get kicked out of my face? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, before yeah, I would be like, oh man, like they don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I'm trying to promote their place, and I'm doing good stuff. But then they don't know what I'm doing. I could be a reporter from England, like making their place look stupid. So yeah. 
yeah. kind of just accept it, accept that um, they're just doing their job and yeah, probably should ask in advance. <laughs> So they're not. They're not in the. Um, they're actually coming out of lockdowns and stuff like that over there. So it's getting pretty good. Um, yeah. Well, we. I don't think we're technically really in a lockdown now. Okay. It's more like. Um, I think they call it a quarantine, a general quarantine. quarantine. Right. But then it's just like face shields and masks outside, and yeah, and like there's new norms in. Um, there's new norms in the restaurants and public places, but it doesn't feel. I feel like things are things are moving in the right direction. Tra- traffic's back, <laughs> so that's a good sign. It's a sign that people are doing their thing, and I think yeah, people are. It's more like uh, people are at work half the time and working from home. So I feel like people have adjusted a lot. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait until we get to that level, man. Because oh, we're in a lockdown here. Oh yeah, the new strain and all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It, it's. I think it's the third lockdown we've been on. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we get out of it, but it's, uh, it's at least it's somewhat hopeful, you know, when you see, cause we, we, we were talking as well to, uh, moves, uh, the, the C, uh, the founder of, uh, Tarsia records the, he, yeah. he, the, you know, they work with, uh, Bugoy and all those guys. And we were just talking about their work and he was like, yeah, it feels like slowly it's getting back to normal and stuff. And <laughs> we might be able to go to the beach soon and things like that. And I'm just like, dude. Why would you say that? Oh, no. No, it's like, bro. Is it snowing? Is it snowing at your place? It Not was, anymore. It was a couple of days back. Like at about yesterday, the the temperature started to pick up, uh, pick up back again. But like um, the day before yesterday, we were like minus three or something. And, and yesterday was like 11. Yeah, today so is like nine degrees. So it's just nuts. Oh, that's not bad. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's. Do so you guys get to go out? You guys get to go out much? I just like to walk around the parks in like public, like open spaces, but malls, restaurants, and uh, anything like basically where you have to be anywhere, it's closed. Everything's closed. Under lockdown, yeah. So everything's closed. You only get like parks and uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's it, dude. You know, you know, bad lemmy's clubbing, dude. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm sure, man. (laughs) <laughs> like you know bars and pubs and it's not, you're not having house parties then no nah, we can't man we we're can't you're not allowed to, oh you're not allowed to no, have no not uh, allowed not around. allowed no 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 bubbles bubbles cannot mix so yeah. people mm. like only between your household and that's it yep uh, uh we'll be back out in the clubs man Come we'll on. have to go out Anytime. I'm... Absolutely. Whenever you're back <laughs> down in London, let us know. What's the scene like in the Philippines? Like the, the party scene, clubbing scene in the Philippines? Right now, it's not great. But before, yeah, it was sick, man. It's sick. One of the biggest clubs in Asia was is in Manila. Really? Oh, like, and then there's a new um, close to where I live, actually. There's a place, like a new, like, um, it's like the old, old place, old town. But then they've, like, renovated it. And it's, like, new, cool, hipster kind of um <laughs> like bars and things Ooh, so there's like wow. a, a pirate ship themed one and then nice. different like yeah really cool places man i really i cool. like bars more than i like clubs like i like to go to like a bar that plays music that's that's more me exactly than clubbing than that into the whole let's go <laughs> rave <laughs> <laughs> you like a sp- you like to be able to speak yeah <laughs> yeah definitely it's yeah like, yeah like, nah like, yeah nah, socialize yeah. <laughs> you want to just party yeah. everyone's like let's go <laughs> socializing bit of it comes naturally you know? <laughs> screaming at people's ears <laughs> it's fun. i love, it's love fun. it there was something and uh, there was something we were we were discussing Bali and i before before we came in in the podcast and we were like um it it, it is interesting how um how, how sort of the the industry in the philippines and we always kind of speak about this, but the industry in the Philippines, I, I think it, it's one of the most talent field ones. Like mm-hmm. it, it, the amount of talent in there is is ginormous, especially like raw talent, right? Which is it, it's still mind boggling to me. But I'd also imagine then that the competition for um for kind of like, yeah, like TV shows or, or, or online shows, or, you know, you're getting like this, this whole ray of singers and, and and I, it doesn't feel like it's competitive, but what mm-hmm. what's it like being inside of the of the fi- Filipino industry with an idea, and the, and and mm. 
an idea that I'm sure you know is worth a lot. You know, it's it's a brilliant mm-hmm. idea. So, what what's the scene like when you have a, a at, at the start of an idea? Um, that's interesting, man. Do you mean like in terms of like there's a lot of competition and there's other shows? Is that what it's you like mean? What is yeah? What is like in, in like to put your your to sell your idea to people? Like what? Is there here, a lot of people mm-hmm, doing it, yeah. or? Because here in England, like you, you, in in London, one of the most uh, uh, like uh, filled filled up uh, industries, I guess the right word would be saturated, uh, saturated industries. It's obviously the theatre industry. You know, it's mm-hmm. very difficult here to actually throw a theatre show that does well in the West End. Mm-hmm. You know, that's basically impossible. It's very difficult to create a hit song unless you're with one of the major labels. It's very difficult to have a hit show unless you are with one of the major networks. Mm-hmm. Um, is it kind of the same over there or do you feel there is, because we, we've spoken to some producers and they feel like for producing music, there's a huge market and there's actually uh, not that much competition in terms of a- Being independent being has, in, a, a, has an advantage. That has an advantage. Is it, do you feel there is a, a gap in the market for, for I- ideas like TV ideas or do you feel it's saturated? Yeah, man. To be honest, like it, that's hard for me to answer because I don't really care about competition. Like I think it comes, it's like the football thing or like the com- the com- the competitor thing. Like I don't, I just focus on doing what I think is really good. Like I, honestly, I I don't think about. Obviously, like I admire the shows and other things and mm. take inspiration from other other stuff. But yeah, I just really focus on creating good, a good a good show. Like doesn't matter what the people next to me are doing. Like, there's a lot of like you say there is. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of other com- like shows similar to this, and they want to introduce a similar. No, nah, there's not. There's not many shows like yours. That that's not true. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I'm serious. That but is I not. Piracy <laughs> rule. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get after them, Graham. But no, nah, I've never seen a show like that. I've always wished there was a show like that. Actually, me too. Awesome. You should do. Yeah. You guys should do the Venezuela version. Nah, nah, nah. No. We'll, we'll let you, do it. you can do it. Do you ever, do you ever want to go worldwide? Definitely, man. Of course. Yeah. This is like I want to find. First, I want to find Filipinos everywhere, all mm-hmm. over. I've done. We've done Manila. We're gonna go around the provinces. Yeah. Then, the big Filipino markets are the bigger markets abroad, um, mm-hmm. uh, like the USA, Middle East, Europe, yeah. Australia. So I'm, I want to go find Filipinos everywhere. And then, yeah, I think this format is good in any in any country anyway like the big yeah. karaoke countries are like india and uh like other asian countries like korea, korea. is ginormous in karaoke. exactly yeah japan so like maybe these countries are the first ones to adopt this style of show but yeah i really think this can be everywhere definitely it would do well i, th- I think it would do really well in a place like south korea Totally. Yeah, because in South Korea they do have the same uh, kind of uh, approach to karaoke. Same in Japan. Yeah. Japan. Japan as well. Japan yeah. Huge in yeah. Indonesia. And they have bit. They have sick game shows as well, don't they? Like the Japanese yeah. game. Shows. Maybe this one's a bit boring for them. I think there is a there is a certain appeal though that I think is an international appeal. Um, that 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 like I was saying at the beginning is that whole journey a, a authentic unfiltered type of content that i feel the world is in need of mm-hmm. like I, I feel like with mainstream media people know that they're gonna get highly produced very with an agenda type of, uh, um, of yeah. programs right and, mm-hmm. and and entertainment but i feel like there is a need online and and, and in the world that to see unfiltered raw uh, unpredictable mm-hmm. uh, type of content and for 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 entertainment. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're totally hitting the nail on the head with this one. It's 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 dope. like you guys too. You guys too. Yours is authentic and like it's really like long form, unedited. Yeah. You're not trying to you're not trying to show people a certain way. You are just le- leaving it out there, and that's really what that's the future. I feel. That- I hope so, man. I think I think one of the things that I just couldn't bear is is like I, we were in in Venezuela. We worked on TV for a, for a little while, for about six six years as as junior hosts. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, that's uh, cool. Since we were kids, and and then we we toured with music with a junior band as well for about 10, 10 years. And 
we I noticed even I remember now even when I was a kid and I remember then speaking to these to my parents because they were our our what would you call it our managers because we're underage to some yeah. extent yeah and then they work with other people but I never saw kind of the issues and the the the, the dark side of the bit of the, of the industry when you're a kid to me it was fantastic it was all butterflies unicorns and mm -hmm. princesses and prince it was fun and then when 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 you start growing up and you start talking to your parents regarding this right and this is the reason why we actually never stayed there and and and, and pursued higher uh, or big, bigger heights mm -hmm. is because when when you work for for these sort of tv networks or 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 you're involved like balls deep in the industry you're no longer you you mm -hmm. are now a product and mm -hmm. and the industry it's all based on demand and 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 the product so if you're not selling and you're not what the product or the market wants you're mm -hmm. outdated but who the hell is to say what the market wants let the market decide no don't yeah, let exactly. these, uh, these other networks decide for you and then uh, it seemed then online become that instrument for for whatever they want to sell you become the the like the face of a product or or mm -hmm. but it's no longer graham it's no like, longer valeska exactly. it's no longer effort it's something else mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's like a cookie cutter kind of thing exactly yeah. yeah so then when i saw when i started seeing these uh, uh you know these online independent creators create things that were unfiltered i i and an hate extinction of themselves and their perspectives i hate uh, i think people know this i think it's not that i hate it it's a strong <laughs> word i just dislike content that is uh heavily edited and like interviews that are like five minutes long. It's like, hold on a second. You did not speak just for five minutes. <laughs> that's what you yeah. decided to show me. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That's what, that's what, for some reason, someone there in the editing uh, uh, backdrop was like, yeah, this is the best five minutes of this person. Mm -hmm. No, no, mm -hmm. I want to get to know that guy. I want to know what he's about. I want to get to know this lady. I want to know what she's about. Not through these sort of lens of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not to throw shit. Filtered. Network. Yeah, but not through these filter you know so i'm, I'm kind of glad you're also on the same the same line i think i hope it is the future you know mm -hmm. but it just feels it more is. human like i feel like everything is going towards being a bit over like a bit fake really like if you go on instagram like we i've done it before man i've done it before like you whiten your teeth you make your muscles bigger yeah. you do everything like you do you do like it's fake Every, everyone's all these influencers are doing like certain things and it's not real mm. so like i think that's it's gonna hit a point where we have to it has to be the unedited it has to be stuff like what we're trying to create like rather than the the over overly produced and faked stuff yeah. it has yeah. to do it has to do something to your head doesn't it, it? Does. like seeing all these like perfect people on instagram that it by the way i'm does. not nowhere near perfect but we know this now and i think a lot of people know this i think a lot most people are really really smart but but at the same time everyone still gets pulled by it mm. like this Just, it's an attractive package like what, <laughs> yeah. like what do you why do you buy things online because they look pretty because they sound pretty because mm -hmm. it, it's attractive and then you go ahead and you click it and you buy it right. and, and i feel like <laughs> that's the appeal of of the online facade and I, because you don't want to see the guy that just woke up and has puffy eyes and messy hair. Like, <laughs> that is not appealing to you. You want to see the girl that woke up at 12 o'clock with perfect hair and, like, you know, fantastic makeup, <laughs> you know? And it seems natural. It, ha it has like to do something to your head. Just it being does, exposed though. to that constantly perfect world that's not real. Well, but you see it in, in, in today's generation, you see it in, in my generation. People have this twisted perspective uh, of what they should look like, what they should sound like, what they should do, mm -hmm. what the perfect lifestyle is, should be. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's funny though. Of course, it, it like it does things to your head. Absolutely. I. I, yeah, I wonder... We have to, we get drawn into it because we're trying to fit in. Like that's mm. all we are. We're just guys and girls trying to fit in with each other and trying to not be awkward or whatever yeah. so you just get drawn into it all yeah. very difficult to very difficult to like repel it yeah yeah and no and i don't think it's like repelling it but like finding what's true and what's honest with yourself and, mm. and that that is such a 
weird puzzle to figure it out like yeah i feel like you guys have got that though you guys know how to express yourself like with like your style and things like that but it's it's a constant evolution <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah right. all right i just i just feel that the the thing is what i what i find myself um um really really uh, uh aware of like I, i genuinely try to do this and Bale makes fun of me actually a lot of my friends make fun of me for this i don't like to go online like you know on instagram how people do the whole scrolling thing and they like i don't know watch memes or watch the fashion trends and stuff i i, I can't do that because my head my i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit like uh obsessive with stuff <laughs> so if i see if i if i if i catch myself watching memes i'm gonna watch memes for like seven hours <laughs> so and then i get and, and then you kind of your perception of the world is different even even through like funny stuff or these little things you read and all this stuff that is actually not you know that's not how the real world works so what i do now is that i'm basically like a caveman i just text <laughs> people you know we meet and stuff and we go out and, and i see kind of what the latest trends are obviously now because of the podcast i have to but i don't I don't scroll ever. I don't know any memes anymore. I don't know what the hell's funny anymore in terms of like, uh, you know, the little pictures that people sent. TikTok it isn't for me, but that that's kind of the way I have managed to um, kind of keep my feet on the ground because my head sometimes can get, you know, mm, to the sky. Drawn into that stuff. Yes, yeah. And I, I, dude, I like shiny stuff. I like good looking women. <laughs> I like partying. I like, that. It, it's, that's what I enjoy. So, I have to keep myself on the ground and the way I do that is just uh, what would you call it like uh, carefully exposing myself to the stuff I I see online all the time mm. but whether that's I good that it, you're proactive whether I got it down or not I don't know if that's too extreme but yeah all right I'll take the compliment mate <laughs> <laughs> what's your take on it like what do you do in your With social media do yeah 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 well it's weird man because so before I was doing like the old, the usual thing, like influencer thing. So mm -hmm. that's when you start, I started getting caught up with all that stuff. Like it becomes your life and like other people are posting like this. So I have to post like that because that's the standard. Yeah. And then I realized I was caught up in that, wiped everything out and then just started posting when I just feel like it. And when I'm doing something, I feel like I want to post about. Um, because yeah, with, if I was doing a vlog, I feel like social media would be mixed up in my life. Right, because it's it's not a vlog now. It's separation. It's street singing superstar. It's a t it's a show, separate from me. So now I can separate myself from social media. Oh, separate myself from like social media life, which has been very helpful. Like, yeah, everyone, we all get caught up in it, man. We get caught up in um, growing things, posting things because uh, because you know it's like no people that will no people will like it. And like I was at first, it starts off. I'm just promoting my games, and then I'm doing an inspirational quote, and then it's just it, it, one thing leads to another, and then you're just doing it just because. And then what's the point in that? We're just like, yeah. So I had I actually like wiped out a lot of my Instagram, just posted things that uh, I care about. Right. And now, yeah, I feel like I've got a good separation, but I do get caught scrolling now. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone does, yeah. <laughs> I think I think um also like the that because there is also true power right in in the whole social media thing. I mean, mm -hmm. look at what we're doing. Uh, 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 this wouldn't be this would be impossible if if you know mm -hmm. we we the social media thing wasn't a thing. Um um and that there is there is you know real power both income and career wise and you know you're you're you be you know you began modeling and and also uh, football but then modeling and also then agency work and stuff like that. And you kind of have to be part of this whole Instagram game and mm -hmm. all this stuff, right? Yeah. The more the, I think the, the deeper you are in it, you realize that you actually don't. Mm -hmm. But to begin with, I think it, it's a natural uh, uh, progression. Uh, yeah, like a natural answer. Yeah, I, sh I should also be posting stuff like all the popular mm -hmm. stuff I'm posting because mm -hmm. I want to be popular too. I want to mm -hmm. have the income they have. I want to have the lifestyle they have. No, and if they're posting like that and they're getting the jobs, I should do the same. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that, that's a good way of thinking. You know, if you're, if you're thinking pragmatically, it's not a bad way of thinking. But mm -hmm. there, so there is true power in, in the social media business side of it. The, if I think what, what, what some of the most successful people that I, I, I consider successful in terms of even my friends or people in the industry, they, they really have managed, it seemed, to separate social media for being a business mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and being a, a, a another aspect of work mm-hmm. and then their life and and their personal life and their personal development not connected to anything to do with the online world because it's not real. Definitely. It's I definitely think- not real. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. So it's a it's a it's bollocks. like smoke and mirrors. That's the only way that you could probably describe yeah, it. It's, it's just yeah. It's just yeah. a stage. It, it, whatever people put out there is costumes and makeup and whatever yeah. they want you to see. It. And it goes for a lot of people. I I feel like everybody that's online kind of falls into it and is an is natural, but it's also it's also good for people to realize that there is a reality to to it all. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. do you do you do you still um you still playing football or? Uh, no, I haven't played. Man. I haven't played in like two years. Ooh. I've been just, I'm just training more for running. Like I'm oh, doing nice. a, a Loch Ness Marathon next year. Oh, this year. Ooh. As long as we can travel. So I'm basically just doing running training and stretching. Nice. Where, where is, uh, what, what's, what's the name of the marathon again? Loch Ness. The Loch Ness? Scotland. Loch Ness. Oh, yeah, it's like, Scotland. Oh, nice. You know the Loch Ness monster? Yeah. Yeah. Been running around that. <laughs> no How way, really? How many kilometers is that? Uh, 42. Oh, oh my yeah, 42. god, <laughs> I died. I died. So, it's died. a full marathon, mate. Oh, oh, oh my god, <laughs> I, I ran like 10k like five years ago. I died. Like, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna died, do that like, after this. No, 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 I was like <laughs> dead, never running again. <laughs> the, the, our father loves uh marathon running, and he, oh, nice, and yeah, it's He's a bit, crazy. He's it's a, a bit man. extreme. He's even thought of doing some like ultra marathons. So. Oh, that's sick! A crazy man, a crazy man. Yeah. Well, what the hell got you into running? I think that some of the runners are some of the stronger but mentally, mentally people in the world. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm doing it for to train my brain, to be honest. But I'm doing it with. It's kind of cool. Like one of my best friends from England, although he's in England and I'm here. Yeah. Um, he's doing like the same training plan as me. Nice. So he's get like his girlfriend's gonna give birth to their kid in like April or something. Yeah. So we're gonna we he wants to run a marathon just before that. So I've been doing this training plan. Like it's really cool. Like because of like COVID, it's made it we've like it's made it like easier for us to talk to each other. We call each other or send each other more like stuff. So yeah, we like running at the same time. He runs in England and I run here, and then we like we're doing it kind of together. That's dope. <laughs> that's awesome. That's brilliant. That's so cool. That's what I mean. Like the internet's such a cool place for Absolutely. so many yeah. things. Like yeah. that is such a good uh, moment there. That is so <laughs> dope. But without it, that wouldn't be able to happen. And that is yeah. so cool. Yeah. I love that. And like he, he's like my best like best friend from high school, and like we did a half marathon together when we were twenty. Nice. Now we're thirty. We're gonna do the full marathon, and then maybe get your dad involved. We'll do an <laughs> ultra marathon when we're forty. Nice, that's dope. You guys yeah. are crazy. He'll be down. He'll be down by then. I mean, that'll be ten years from now. So yeah. I don't know how old he'll be. How old would he be? Like sixty-nine, sixty-eight. Yeah. Damn. So I think he'll be down. Yeah. Mental def- crime. I think he'll definitely be down. Yeah. Yeah. He loves it. I don't know why. He always does it just for fun. And and it's like, what are you doing? He must have some nice runs around London. Uh, yeah, you you get some pretty cool sights. But he, my he, dad loves running countryside though, like mm. in the mud during the rain, like in the cold. He does things. That's the here. way. He's crazy though. Is I he going know. out in the snow? Well, I, he did. I, yeah, he did. <laughs> it's, it's just nuts. I don't know. I don't know how you guys do it. He's strong minded. Yeah, my head cannot handle it. Like five <laughs> minutes in, I'm like five minutes into a steady jog, and my head. That's is like, why. Why am I doing here? Why, why is it so cold? Why is the weather like this? And then I get distracted by like the birds. Oh, look, a card. Oh, the puppy. <laughs> and I'm really not paying attention to anything. It's terrible. I'm terrible at it. Cannot. That's so good. I love yeah. it. There, there is like, yeah, there, there's a real, um, there's a real skill there apart from the jogging bit and the running bit, but the mental bit of it, it's, it's probably the most appealing to me because some, I don't know, you're probably familiar with someone like Dave Goggins. Of course, man. Yes. Carrying the logs. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to carry that's the logs? What I, that's what I think about at the end of my runs. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Makati going, I'm going to carry the logs. <laughs> yeah, literally. You know? You're crazy. No, dude. <laughs> Do you watch that? Yeah, of oh. course, of course. Have you, have you read his book? 
Uh, no, I haven't read it, man. No, I need to I... listen to it while you run. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. I'm planning. It's called. Um, it's it's a great book, dude. It's a great, great book. It's called because uh, he he did it in a peculiar way. It can't hurt me. It's called. Mm, oh yeah, can't hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, he did it. Someone else peculiar... reads it, right? Uh, I no no he he reads it himself. No, somebody else reads it, but then it's kind of he made it into like a podcast thing where mm. he narrates. So the the narrator narrates one chapter, and then they go into a podcast kind of thing, and they discuss the chapter with Dave. Oh. And then they go into chapter two, then they discuss chapter two. And he kind of breaks down everything even deeper after the chapter. So it's a really, it's like three, 13, 14 hours long. But you get Dave and you also get like the narrator. Because I'm not a big <laughs> fan so when, I'm not a big fan when the writer doesn't narrate his book. Because mm. I can't put a voice inside Dave Goggins' body. It's <laughs> Dave Goggins' voice. You know what I mean? But yeah. it, they did it. They did it really well. So it's, like, it's a really, really good book. It works. That's awesome. That he's he's super good, man. But he like I got let down by him one time. Go on. Right, the first time I did a long like one of my longest runs. It was like a thirty-two kilometer one. But then I was reading, I was listening to David Goggins right before to get me energized. <laughs> okay. Uh, before running, I was like, "Who's gonna carry the logs?" <laughs> like you know the video of him doing the the, the, the chest uh, chest press. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I was like getting hyped up, and then. I started too fast. Ah. Like if it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? So I was like jogging style at the start. <laughs> and I ended up I couldn't finish. I couldn't finish the run. Like it was too hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> so Goggins, Goggins is good for the end of the run. For me anyway. At the start, he gets me too hyper. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. Cause I think I think I love one of his one of my favorite quotes of him is he just says. Like sometimes, because people think he's like uh, this relentless Terminator person, and he mm -hmm. is. He's he nuts. obviously is. But I love it. I think his fate, my favorite quote from him is like, sometimes I just sit in my bed and I look at my running shoes for fucking hours. And then <laughs> before I don't, before I even when I go out running. And then he says, but I still do it. And then <laughs> but like, damn, dude. He's just so motivated. He, yeah. No, he is nuts. I can you must have helped so many people during COVID. Dude, <laughs> dude, when I'm, when I'm, I kid you not, when I am, uh, one of the things that I enjoyed a lot about his work is when I was in the academy and I, we were training a lot. And in, in tennis academy, they have these, uh, a lot of tennis academies do this, but they have this sort of obsession with testing, mm -hmm. like they're testing mus muscular speed. endurance, speed, and, and that's kind of the way, you know, fair enough, that's kind of the way they track progress. Um, the worst test is the interval training test. Oh, nice. And also so. the cycling test, which oh. is, I can't remember what it was. I think my brains decided to block it out because it was so much pain and suffering. Trauma. <laughs> and it was six miles in under what? I can't remember, but it was horrendous. And one of the things they would allow you, like it's just, you go to a gym and you do it. And they, they could do whatever you want. You could even sing if you wanted to as you were doing it. You could scream, you could do whatever you want. There's just people around you, you're gonna be a weirdo, who cares? But what I would do is I would put music and I would put, you know, the, 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 what's that movie, Friday the 13th? <laughs> the dun, 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 Oh yeah, the music. Dun, dun. I would put that on repeat. Yeah, I would put that on repeat <laughs> nonstop. And I would just in peg it in the, in the, in the cycle, in, in, the, in the bike. And I never <laughs> understood why that worked for me. And cause I would go to a really, really dark place. In that sounds dark. It, it is dark <laughs> to try and to try and uh, and achieve the objective, because I, I also had a, a I was battling this injury on my knee, and it, it was it was just a tough time, and I was like, well, I can't try and pretend like I'm happy because I'm not, and I can't try and just say, Ephra, you can do it, cheerleader myself, it ain't gonna work. So I would go into this really dark place of like pain and just hell. I would I would imagine myself in hell and just pedaling through it. <laughs> And uh, it's it bizarre, crazy. I don't know why it works. <laughs> and then it would work every time. It would probably, if I was able to access that type of darkness, I would ace it. <laughs> and then I, I, by by then, I didn't know who Dave Goggins was. And then I, mm -hmm. I started hearing his stories of Hell Week, and how he oh, he yeah. kind of explained. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying I'm like him. Fucking no way. But <laughs> it kind of made a bit of sense that he was like there is true power in mm -hmm. in diving into that sort of darkness and pain and dwelling in it. You know, and, and kind of you find enjoyment. It's like it's like sadomasochism for some extent. It's like yeah, man, you find I enjoyment know. in it. I call it psychopath mode. 
Yeah, literally. Yeah, man. Like when that's what I get into when you know when I'm doing the splits and I'm really pushing it and it hurts, I'm just like like it's that that mode or like at the end of the runs when it's like so difficult and you're hungry and you want to just collapse and sleep. Yeah. That is that that's the best place to be. That's when you start knowing you start learning about yourself. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. That's when you find like who am I? Like who am I am I a wuss? You know what I mean? Do yeah. I quit when things get hard? That's the yeah. only way you find out. I hate running. And that's why interval training in the in the treadmill was the hardest one for me. That's because got on a treadmill as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh my God, please kill me now. <laughs> you know, and, and it was that, like, yeah, yeah. But if you gotta try and kill me, you're gonna have to try good. <laughs> and then you keep going. And it's like, oh my God, my legs gonna fall off now. Well, they better fall off. <laughs> and you keep and it, it's so bizarre. And even right now, it gets me pumped. It's like I yeah, just but start I'm, lifting I weights. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's but class, man. There, is, there is some yeah. odd power in that sometimes, you know. Yeah, it is. It, it's very odd. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried it. I when I was in um um training for musical theater and stuff, I, I like I I tried going because Ephra was like, "Dude, you should totally check it out." I was out. obsessed this, with this brand. This is this is such a good place to go when you don't want to do stuff. <laughs> no, no, it's not a good place to be in, but it works. <laughs> but you were talking wonders, right? And he was like, you should totally try it. And there I am <laughs> in my PT lessons, right? <laughs> After ballet class and my freaking fingers are bleeding from the point shoes and whatever. And I'm like getting myself ready for it, for it, for the workout. And yeah. And I, I like I went to the dark place. <laughs> I did. I was like, yes, yes, power, and I couldn't get out of it after I finished. <laughs> so yeah. I hated Addictive, my life right? after. I was like, oh. I cannot do this anymore. <laughs> like I got stuck in that like in mentality. like mentality. Like I couldn't get out of it. And I was like, yeah. how do you freaking shake it off? And That's I hated. I hated the rest of the day like so hard. But I'm also really? like, a nut. yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> I was like, the freaking hate, I hate this place. And I hate the people. Oh. Every like, freaking boss on the train. I hate you all. <laughs> I was like, it was horrible. Comes so, home, throws his shoes. I was like, I'm done. So, but I'm naturally like a bubbly, happy person. So yeah. I, know, I think it took a toll on me. It was like, I, I cannot do that again. <laughs> so never did it again. Beast bird. Yeah, I, I just think may, maybe you... Uh, so intense, I couldn't. No, because I think it, it sounds like we're being psychopaths, maybe. <laughs> but it, it that to some extent also, you probably find this as well, Graham. It, you also find like when I'm in, when I'm in that state, my self-talk also improves. So mm. I am basically, I'm just talking through all filters to myself. And I, because I, you kind of know what you're capable of, but you okay. just know you're always being a wuss. You know oh. what I mean? So but then in my head, I, like this cheerleader person that is like go ever you can do it it stops talking like that and it's like you're willing to die are you ready to do it, <laughs> do it again go in the heart yeah basically but so i don't yeah. think you have to hate everything i just think it's kind of like uh i hated myself i hated the no, air no. i hated everything <laughs> I, that he's someone dude i'd love to speak to dave just to sort yeah, of yeah man i don't know i i would hate to train with him Hey, yeah, yeah. Not. How about that? He's doing that running, um, that thing in March. Have you seen that? Four by four by forty-eight. Mm -hmm. You run four uh, four miles yeah. every four hours for forty-eight hours. Oh my god! So you don't really sleep, or you like you, you have to run for, you have to run four miles, and you've got like four hours to rest. take a nap. But well, you got to recover, yeah. right? You got to recover, yeah. eat, <laughs> and then oh, run, run four hours again. <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, he's made for that though. You know, Navy yeah. SEAL kind of no. being shot at as you run. He probably, he probably <laughs> yeah. used to that. ultra marathons. You know, no. I am getting a drowned. Worse. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I literally, I literally run like more than five miles. Like I probably, if I run four miles, I'd probably throw up and then pass out. <laughs> oh, and the yeah. weather. Where's Where's he running? You? Sorry, Iberia. Where, where is he running the the four by uh. four? I'm not sure where he's doing it, but he's doing it like um, online, an online thing where everyone can join. So like, it's like a, like a distance thing. So everyone's can do it in their own, in their four, own place. Four, say it again, four miles. Four every miles four every four hours for 48 hours. How many is that? I wanna, uh, why don't we get on this, Graham? I wanna, hold on. I wanna find <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
Is it mad? Is it mad? I think it's mad. Ephra, I think it's, miles, it's every pretty four bad. Hours. Okay, hold on. Four by four by four by four. What what do you mean? It's so, 48 hours. Yeah. 48. Divided by eight, because it's... No, why eight? Oh, I don't know. I don't know maths. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Why ask me? Suck at, suck at maths as well. Let me just find it out. Dave Goggins. I can't. I The idea is sickening. Uh, mm. I cannot even... It's savage. It is. 48 <laughs> hours total And do mileage. people join, though? Like, can of course, mate. Like... Yeah. I would yeah. fucking know. Everyone around the world does it. No way. No I, would, I would join, <laughs> but... Not in this world. I would join, but I think it's <laughs> way too much. Is um, so you have to run seven seventy eight kilometers in two days. Yeah, without yeah, that's, that's proper a bit sleep. Mad. Yeah, nah, without proper bad. sleep. Mm -mm. No yeah. way. Dude. What's the purpose of that? What, what's the point? Get hard, man. Train the brain. Yeah, get hard. <laughs> get hard. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like I see literally no end goal to that whatsoever. Uh, get, get hard. Carry the logs. I was gonna carry, carry the logs, girl. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you're crazy. You all got problems. I'm just gonna say your knees are not gonna be happy after that. Like your hips. Holy guacamole! You're gonna need like a replacement after. Do you find that? Do you find the stretching has helped you with uh with Mate, running? It helps so much, man. My legs have never felt stronger. Like I've I played football for so many years, but only now, like since I've stopped doing that and just doing stretching and running, my legs feel so strong. Like I'm running further than I could ever run when I was a footballer. Wow. And yeah, like I really, a lot. yeah, a lot of it's a it's a lot of hidden running. Um, but now, nah, yeah, the splits help so much because we're supposed to be that flexible. We're not so, like it's only because we sit on chairs and we don't yeah. move as much as we're supposed to. Like we're supposed to be flexible, and like if you look at kids, they can do the splits yeah. and they're super flexible. We just lose it by sitting on chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, no, that is so true. Yeah. yeah. So many injuries come from it, and not many people don't realize. Yeah. Like the the. So many health problems come from being so sedentary. Stiffness. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, and then just getting up and doing things. Wrong. We're supposed to be like active all the time. I know it's crazy. I I when I was going through my physiotherapy after after the injury, I um my physio used to tell me it's crazy i want to say what you injured oh, for people I, listening and also graham because sorry yeah. my back i i like dislocated back. three discs in my lower back oh. like they came out of place like real bad like the l4 or l5 yeah yeah lower. yeah well, from from all the lumbar spine just kind of like oh. came out of place and i couldn't feel my left leg from like my knee down i literally had no feeling whatsoever and so on my thigh it was pretty pretty you know eh it nice. was there but it was it wasn't really there <laughs> so like flick um, it yeah <laughs> yeah i used to put my foot yeah i used to put my foot in like hot hot really hot water just to see if i could feel anything and, wow. and it was like nothing so um I, I i went through a really hard period of physio and recovery and um my physio used to tell me valeska you'd be surprised like the tiny little uh, difficulties that usual normal people that work nine to five jobs that are on desks every day suffer and they don't know it's like from bad posture or mm -hmm. lack of mobility or just literally walking and stretching every mm -hmm. time they got a chance and um, he, he told me that one of his clients used to be very like had like a tremor in one of his hands and he thought he was getting Parkinson's because like the tremor was pretty strong. He was shaking. Yeah. And it was just really bad posture and the nerves here in the upper back mm, were caught like up. Yeah, were caught up in between this mass of stiff muscle. So mm -hmm. through movement and regular stretching, goodbye tremor. And it's it's it's, it's, crazy. it's it's all connected, right? Yeah, it's mad. I like, didn't even have to like cut him open or anything no, like do no. surgeries. I bet before people would have surgeries and do all this crazy stuff. Now you can like figure it out and massage it out and make it yeah. like do it yourself sometimes. Mm. To some extent, yeah. And also now as well with so many like uh, great masseuses and, uh, and, and, and sport massages, parlors available and stuff like that. A sports massage, you stretch in your own time, get a massage mm. and you're good to go. 
yeah, yeah. foam bro that's a cheaper version you know if you, if you don't have a, a parlor next to you or a painful masseuse. but it works absolutely <laughs> and if you don't have a massage roller get a tennis ball yeah you know get a tennis yeah, ball start rolling on it and cry sit yeah. on it yeah <laughs> sit that's on it best. literally yeah is the, the best thing to do I think it, and it's just creating that awareness I think that in a lot of people I think thanks to uh, on the online community um, have, learning as have well. got, yeah have gotten to understand this type of things like issues that you wouldn't like bad problems with sleeping or like irregular sleeping patterns can be fixed with regular stretching like it's crazy mm. and it, you think oh it wouldn't work but it, it really does yeah. it, and it's mad yeah it's well like, that's why yogas they've done it for thousands of years if yeah. it wasn't successful they would have stopped it right yeah like, definitely. Thou- literally thousands ancient it is and it, it's it's such a like i said it's such a mindful experience uh, getting to know your body on a physical level as well as as understanding stillness mentally it's tough do you find you sleep better well because since you started stretching um i sleep well man because i do i like i run 75 kilometers a week yeah that's that's probably around, why like, you sleep better i'm just always if i have a nap in the, I have to, I have to, I, I'll just pass out. To be honest. <laughs> There's still <laughs> nap in so my tired. vocabulary. <laughs> I, I, no, dude, I, I nap before, I have to, I nap before running. So like, ah, nice. before, if, like every night I'll have like a, a run and before that I'll sleep for like an hour and then run then, but no, I don't have a problem sleeping. I'm passed out. Last night I kind of had, I did, but thinking about a lot of things with mm. the show and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mainly, usually just passed out. <laughs> uh, that's cool well brother ju- just to finish off what's um what what can we expect from a street singing superstar in 2021 what's what's the plan apart because you mentioned you know going into provinces mm. and i started to travel yeah. what's the what's the plan for this year yeah well my dream is to for you guys and everyone to see this on tv in some yeah. way but i can't promise that but my goal is to go to all of the provinces at least and find singers this year okay go to t- like at least 10 different places and find singers that's what i want to do but the end goal is to have it on tv television so more people can watch it and we can grow it on tv and youtube at the same time yeah. amazing killing killing two birds that's, with one stone l- let us know your let us know your instagram handle tiktok and stuff where people can follow you whoever we'll they're leave, listening we'll leave all, all these links in the in the in the bottom but it's just uh we have people also just listening from our high radio or spotify mm. so just awesome, uh, yeah. If you guys want to check out what I'm doing, just go on at Graham Cagill. Um, that's on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, everything. You'll find it. And then the show is called Street Singing Superstar. We go around the streets to find your next singing idol. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Yay. That's brilliant. exciting. It's brilliant, Bridge Well, Graham, absolute pleasure, man. Thank Thanks you. so much, bro. Uh, again, anytime you're welcome back and anything uh, again you got all our support man really really I appreciate that really you is. guys too you guys too for sure when you come to the philippines i'm sure we're gonna hang out definitely absolutely man everybody graham see you later man Best wish. thanks so much bro Bye.